Hey guys, welcome back to part two of how to paint miniatures with the Salt on Black Rage. In today's episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening up the box, we're going to take a look on what's inside, and then we're going to assemble some of these models and then paint them. Alright, see you in the next part. So here we have the Salt on Black Rage. So I'm just going to open this up, I haven't even opened it, it's brand new in the box, it's good to go. I'm going to take my hobby knife, and I'm just going to find an entrance point here, cut it open, peel this crap off. Okay. Wait. Here we go. So right now you got this cool little, uh, art on the box. It's pretty sick. And let's take a look at what is inside. So in this pouch, we have our templates for playing the game, and we have all the bases. That's pretty good. We also have a little pack of dice. Excellent. So that way we can actually play the game. Uh, we have one sprue, two sprue, three sprue, four. Okay, I'm going to take a look at those in just a second. There's also a transfer sheet. We'll be talking about what that is when we go to paint our models. Here we have um, our whippy sticks. They're good for whipping. You know, break one up and show you. Hopefully you can hear that. They're excellent for that. Um, and I think they're designed to be a ruler slash line of sight tool. And they're good, kind of, for line of sight, but ruler is not. Because look, I don't know if you can tell, um, but that's not really straight at all. It's kind of going... It's not good, but it's pretty nifty. I like it. Um, and some books. So that's always some good stuff. Manpower. This is a little thing of stuff you can buy from Games Workshop to supplement um, this. Don't listen to this, because if you don't have the books for either of these, um, you know, races, then don't buy stuff. Buy this. This is good. Seems to be an arm already out of the screw. Alright, so this is the Assault on Black Ridge book. This essentially just talks about all the different things in this box. And it talks about, I think there's a little thing on painting. Um, don't listen to it, because I'm going to be showing you how to paint. So, whatever. Gives you some fluff. And what fluff is, is it gives you some info on like the history of the game, like in game terms, not just the history of the game itself, but like of each race in the game, gives you some info on them, and then it gives you uh, a quick reference sheet, which is actually pretty decent, and you're going to be using this. Um, I think this one may be out of date, but I don't know. I don't think it is, but could be wrong. And then here's the actual rule book. Now, here's the really cool thing. The rule book for the game costs like $60. Uh, this comes essentially free with this. And, uh, I mean, clearly it's a lot smaller than the rule book, and it's soft covered. But here's the thing this actually contains every rule in the game. The only thing you're getting with the rule book uh, that you can buy is you're getting um, a hardcover and more fluff. But who needs fluff? All you need are the rules to play the game. That's all you need. Don't need anything else. Nothing. This is good. Good, 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 good. Alright, so let's take a look at these screws. So, let's look at this bag first. Okay, the bag with the templates. Open it up. And here is the template screw. It's pretty straightforward just got three templates on it. It's got your actual template, 
template. Uh, it's got your three inch blast template and your six inch blast template. Um, these are used for different things in the game. And uh, yeah, we're not gonna worry about this because I'm not gonna teach you how to play. I'm just gonna teach you how to paint them and put them together. So I'm gonna throw this over there. Next thing you get are bases. This is good to have because it's good to put your models on. If you don't have bases to put your models on, um, then they'll look silly because they won't stay upright. All this fancy stuff. This is for the Dreadnought. These are for the Defcoptas, the flying things. Uh, everything else, these small ones, are for all the Space Marines and for the Orcs. And these big ones are for the Terminators. Uh, and I think one of them, there's six, I think, and one of them is for the Orc War Boss, which is this guy. Oh, this guy right here. Okay, he's pretty nifty looking. So, first sprue. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have some Terminator bodies. Okay, with their arms. These are power fists. We have their torso parts. Uh, some guns. And then coming over here, we have some orky bits, and some heads, a body, two bodies, more bodies, head, head, pages stuck, more bodies, yada yada yada, some guns, and that's where the one fell out, it's right here, perfect fit, some space marines, defcopter, Defcopter. Okay, so that's the first sprue. Okay, so these are orc knobs. They're a little bit bigger than your normal orcs, and they have some cooler bits. They have big choppas instead of just normal choppas. And they also have big sluggers. Okay, um, more orc knobs. Defcopter, Defcopter. Uh, knobs, bits. Oh, that's the war boss bit. That's part of his power claw. And look, there's the war boss. Um, a war boss gun, I think. And then some more knobs. And then some normal orcs. These are um, big guns or something. I don't know. And as I said, death copters. So next screw. And here, orcs, terminator stuff, defcopter, look, another defcopter, space marines, orcs, so this is quite, almost exactly the same, actually I think it is exactly the same as the other sprue, and then here, uh, let's see if I get it this way, uh, this is a space marine captain, He's a pretty neat model, I'm not a fan of him though. Um, and time to put this back over. That's a, where, that's a Space Marine Sergeant. You got some more Space Marines. You got some Orky bits. The Dreadnought. Front and back. Space Marines. And oh, the Terminator Sergeant guy. Is this back bit? Where is this front bit? This front bit's on over here. There's his front bit. Alright, and that's uh, all the sprues. So let's take these off. Let's assemble some. So the way I like to take models off of a sprue is like this. I usually use a pair of plastic clippers, but I honestly can't seem to find them. So I'm just going to use some wire cutters. I use these as kind of like my backup. Uh, and I'm just gonna clip right here and right here and you're gonna clip essentially wherever the model is attached to the sprue and uh, here's a quick tip um, uh, uh, wire cutters as you can see um, 
kind of like have like a beveled kind of thing so they they kind of come inwards and they have a very thin part down at the bottom uh, and what happens is wherever this part is facing uh, it generally leaves kind of like a huge dent so keep that part away from the model and keep the flat part towards the model okay so let me find myself on cam here there we go Put that where else oh, up here Alright, so the way I like to clip models out is I like to come and just use my wire cutters or uh, I prefer my plastic clippers but I can't seem to find them so we're just going to uh, cut some guys out with these. So as you can notice the, the wire cutters have this weird little thing where it kind of bevels inwards and the bottom part is actually quite thin, I don't know if you can see that. And the top part kind of has this like angled surface. So what happens is wherever that angle area, this big surface area is, that's going to leave a weird kind of like a dent. So try to keep that part away from the model. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's find a good one. Um, put this about. All right, here we go. So right here. On this guy's arm. If I come in, see how I have the flattest part of the wire cutter against the model and the other part facing away. And see how it kind of squished that bit right there? That was because of the angled surface. So keep that part away from the model. So, you know, do it again. See how it squished it? Keep it away. And you just do that to everything. So now that we have our guy cut out, I'm using this orc here, he only had three bits he needed. He needed a head, and I just picked a random one, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then this arm, once again it doesn't really matter. So as you can see, there's holes in all these parts, and in the other parts there's little kind of pin things. So like his arm right here, get a little closer. His arm right here has a little hole, and his other arm, right, well this arm has a hole, that arm has a peg. So you could essentially put the model together just by doing this. However, it's not advised. Um, right, it, it works, it doesn't move around, but to make sure everything sticks, uh, we're gonna use some glue. I prefer Loctite, but it's actually kind of expensive. It runs about $6 a bottle. So instead, we're going to use Ross Super Glue. This runs about, um, what is it, $2 a bottle or something like that? Or not this little pack. It's 2 milliliters, whereas this is 4. But the Ross stuff, as I said, it costs 2 uh, dollars for one. So that means it costs four dollars for two. So that means you get four dollars for four milliliters, whereas the Loctite is six dollars. So all I'm going to do is take my glue, apply a little bit in the hole, a little bit on this peg here. You only need a little bit. Super glue is designed to work in just a little bit. Too much of it actually makes it brittle. So 
Gonna put this on there. Get into a pose I like. And do the same for the head. Doesn't want to go in. All right, what's blocking you? Sorry about the fuzziness. Get in there. All right, well this head doesn't want to go in, but uh, I'm sure you can find a head that will. I'm sure this one will. It's just the angle of the camera is preventing me from getting enough force to get it in. So uh, yeah, you get the idea. Stick it all together. And then to glue them to the base, you just put them on the base. Right, so you see if he fits. Good, because he's going to flop around without glue. So put glue along this, put him in, and then eventually, when it was something like this, it's all put together. Okay, now I've also primed this, and that's what we're going to be talking about in the next part.